All right, guys. This set comes from the land of the ice and snow, from the midnight sun where the hot spring flows. Led Zeppelin, right? Anyways, this set actually comes from Lego, and I'm super excited to be showing you the new Lego Ideas Viking Village. Take a look at the box here we see. This is the Viking Village, which is a Lego Ideas set. This is actually Lego Ideas set number 51. That's pretty impressive. That means that we, as a collective of Lego fans, have enough brain cells to come up with at least 51 ideas for Lego to make sets off of. Congratulations to us. Now, taking a look at this set, this kind of gives me the vibes of like the Barracuda Bay, but for Vikings, which is really exciting because Vikings is one of those awesome things that we got, I don't know, 15 years ago. So I'm super stoked to be getting another set dedicated to Vikings. Looking at the back here, this kind of reminds me of How to Train Your Dragon, like that kind of like Viking village there. And you can do all sorts of fun stuff like take off the roof take off the other roof, move the wall. It's pretty exciting. Oh, look at them. They're enjoying mutton. I like that. There's like a Viking king. I'm assuming a blacksmith digging for copper. But I'm sure you're tired of hearing me talk, so let's grab the hammer of the gods and get this thing open. Nice. Taking a look at this, it looks like we got a whopping 15 bags of all your Viking fun. And taking a look at the instructions, we can see here in the front, something I wanted to point out is that this no longer really looks like those terrible renders we were seeing for the last year or so. This just looks like the straight up set. So kudos to LEGO for improving that. Now going through here, we just see we have some stuff about Vikings, 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 and the fan designer. And here's the original fan design. You can see that they went with a lot more color in the new one, which I'm happy to see. Talk about meeting the LEGO designers behind everything. And boom, let's get building. So the Viking Village set actually splits into three different sections, which is kind of cool. So you can kind of do this, right? You split it on up and split it on up. And we'll talk a little bit more about how that mechanism works in a minute. But you can see that it goes into this one part here, which is kind of the armory slash artistry kind of area. Then you have this great dining hall. I'm calling it the great dining hall because it looks pretty great. And there's a chicken wing in it. And then over here is like a little watchtower and cave area right here on the docks. So let's go ahead and take a look at each of these one at a time. Taking a look at the first build that you get in this set. This is, I'm assuming, the armory. I looked in the instructions. I couldn't find if they like named all of these like little buildings and stuff. But you can take out this little roof here, which is kind of cool. And you see it has a lot of little like snow elements on it, which is kind of nice. And then I really like how they designed all the little wood pieces on there. This back comes with one little teeny tiny minifigure, which we'll look at in a bit. And something that really strikes me right at the beginning is the use of the new fern pieces that we got in the Rivendell set. But now they come in dark green, which I think we've already seen those in dark green before. But now we also get them in white. And we make these cool little pine trees. It's kind of nice here, right? With that little white on top. They're going for the same thing over here, but they're just using a bunch of grass pieces, which is also a really good call. I really like how the grass is like kind of thinning out the tree a little bit. Here we can see they have some cool artistry and we'll get into that too because I'm really, really stoked in this set. No stickers. You know my stance on stickers. It's print it, don't stick it. And this set holds up to that, but we'll get into that later too. Taking a look in here, we can see that there is a cool little play feature where you can lift up the little flames like so. There's also a pickaxe, a helmet, a sword, and a shield without any painting on it, as well as an anvil to drop on Wiley Coyote. I like the architecture in this set. It's supposed to, you know, represent just wood, but it really does scream kind of like old Nordic Viking home to me. And I really like this just little added element of having the little smokestack on the top there. The set kind of takes inspiration from like the Lion's Knight's Castle or Barracuda Bay, where it kind of has like that blue base but they use those triangle pieces to kind of make it seem more like a display rather than having just these like big rectangles. I think that'd be a little bit ugly. So I like that they did that. I don't know if this is supposed to represent it being on like the ocean or on the river. I like to think it's a fjord, which is kind of a combination of both, which does eventually bring me to one thing that does let me down about this set. I would have loved to have just seen a Viking boat, just a small one. Didn't have to be anything big. Just a little tiny Viking boat would have been cool, huh? I do like the little cobblestone walk paths that they do. They have those three by three circles as well as two by two tiles and a bunch of studs and dots pieces all around and little peaks of snow in there just to remind you that it's a little bit chilly. What's really interesting about this is the clipping mechanism that they use because they don't actually use pens like they would in modular sets to connect the different modules of this set. 
Rather, it's just these little bar pieces here horizontally. And then on the larger module, it has a little clip that clips to them. So it's kind of interesting. It's kind of different. I'm not used to seeing something like that, but I think it works really well. So when you're ready, you can take the roof off your hat and put it right back on there. And look at that. Doesn't that look swell? And next is the grand dining hall. You can take off the top like so. And when you take a look inside, you can see there's a lot going on in there. We have a throne, I'm assuming for the Viking King. Viking King. Viking. Viking. A little chalice, a chicken wing, as well as a little grill there, which if you know anything about me, you know I love grilling, so I really love this set. And overall, it's a really basic build, I would say, but it's still really nice. Like, it gets the job done. It has, like, a combination of new and old building techniques that we've seen, like, in the last 40 years. I really admire that. And really, the only feature that this building has is that the door swings open. So, you know, that's... It's pretty cool, I guess. It's a little drafty in here. I am pretty impressed with the mechanism for placing the roof on top of it. It just kind of fits on there. There's no like studs or anything connecting it. It's just kind of snug. And that's mostly due to the fact that there's a bunch of pieces here that just kind of lock everything in, including some really pretty printed pieces on the side. I really enjoy the architecture on the top of this set, especially because we got some golden glizzies and you know how I love me some glizzies. And last, we're taking a look at the watchtower slash mine slash fishing dock. <laughs> There's a lot going on on this particular platform of the set. My personal favorite is the mead area where you can get barrels of mead. I do appreciate that nice touch there. The bridge heavily featured in this set is mainly made out of the Spider-Man web piece just in black and you get two of them. And you can put these little clips on here and build a little bridge. Now, this is really like the only issue I have with this set, like just from a, like a physical standpoint, is that the bridge is a little finicky. You know, it's really hard. Sometimes it, the ropes kind of twist a little bit, so it's hard to get that like angle just right on all of these, and it kind of bothers me. However, I don't know, it also kind of adds to the ricketiness of this old style bridge. And you can put this nice little archer here in the watchtower and he'll keep a watchful eye out for dragons and sea serpents and Christopher Columbus. More on that later. When you open up the back here, you can actually see that you can't take off the roof easily. So what you do is you take off the side here and you can see that there's a little bit of detail. There's a candle, it looks like a loaf of bread right there. And that's pretty much it for that facade. When you take a look in this, you can see that there's actually a pumpkin in here. Now this is a pumpkin I have not seen in this color. Actually, I don't even know what color that is. I think that's kind of that Geonosian brown color. I think it's dark orange. I don't believe we've seen a pumpkin in that color in Lego before, which is really cool. But something else is I'm pretty confident that pumpkins are native to North America. Hold on. Pumpkins are a member of the gourd family, which includes cucumbers, honeydew, melons, cantaloupe, watermelon, zucchini. These plants are native to Central America and Mexico. All right, here's the deal. I don't care what your mommy or your daddy or your bald-headed granny said. Vikings were the first Europeans in America. There, I said it. We all know it. Leif Erikson, you remember, 999, the immigrant song, Led Zeppelin, it's all there. I'm telling you, Vikings were the OG Europeans in America. And if you didn't know that, shame on your school. Anyways, going back to this set, you can see in here that you have a nice little ladder leading up to the top, which I like that. I like having the continuity to get to the bridge there. And now when you take a look at this part here, this is probably my favorite part of this little module is just the little rock pieces here. They're all snot pieces at different angles and it creates this cool illusion of a staircase that goes all the way up and then you can open this door. What's interesting about this door is it actually utilizes two of the black Harry Potter ones which is pretty cool. It just gives it that little extra effect. I really like that. I've never actually seen anybody do something like that. The door itself is kind of chunky. It's a very thick door so maybe canonically it's got a lot of insulation but I digress. Under this tower, you can see that there's actually a little cave here. What looks to be, I'm gonna say copper. It looks like it's a little copper mine or something that they're trying to dig out of there and they're using that to refine ore and then eventually they'll take that ore and get iron and then they'll mine for diamonds and then they'll eventually mine for netherite and then they'll go fight the ender dragon. You know how Vikings do things. Over here on this side, you can see that they have some fish hanging out to dry, which is pretty cool. I like just getting different colors of that fish. I would like to see Lego just 
change it up a bit with the fish piece. I love that fish piece, I really do, but I'd like to see different fish eventually. Over here on the docks, you can see similarly to the other modules that you have these big cobblestone features with these giant discs. And over here, my favorite part is gotta be the barrels of mead because uh, you know, you gotta get to do these cold winters somehow, right? And then at last, we get to the little guard post over here. One thing I'll say about it is these little planks here are a little bit flimsy. They seem to kind of come off pretty often, but you know, just leave them on and they'll be fine. And it just kind of creates a nice little like sense of depth to the whole set once we put it all together. You have this little kind of tower standing at the front and this large tower standing at the back next to these other towers here. I think it's just a really nice piece of art. In fact, I would definitely recommend this for anybody who's just into Vikings in general. But when I was looking at the instructions in closer detail, I saw that the fan creator was actually a historian. And so it actually makes sense that he put so much work and detail into this. And you could see that propagated by the Lego designers. Now, speaking of the instructions, this is the most disappointing part of this set by far. Like Lego, come on, man, get it together. There are three modules in this set. Count them. One, two, trace. Please give multiple instruction books for sets like this. This is the perfect set. Imagine you have two siblings, you get this for Christmas, and you and your siblings can build it together. Or you and your spouse can build two or something. You, your spouse, and your kid can build all of these together at the same time while you're watching How to Train Your Dragon. However, for some reason, Lego just decided, nah, nah, we didn't learn from the past. We're just gonna make one instruction book in this set. I don't really have an official rating system, but when it comes to sets like this, especially in the 18 plus market, and especially if they're modular, please just make multiple instruction books, Lego. It's like four more sheets of paper. Anyways, I digress. So here's the fun part, right, is when you put all three of them together, they kind of clip right in like I said, they use clips, they don't actually use pens. And what's really cool is when they use this nice use of angles. I love when they're able to get these wedge plates to line up like that. And so you have this nice little angle. So you have this part of the Lego set just goes straight back and forth. But these two are tilted at 45 degree angles and that's just nice. And it actually looks good from almost every angle, even the back, which is really nice. And I gotta say, I had my expectations really low when it came to this set. And even when I saw in the box, I wasn't like, whoa, this looks amazing. However, building it, seeing it in person, and seeing how big it is, right? It's a little over 2,000 pieces. This thing's pretty cool. I would put this right up there again with my favorite set, which is the Lion's Knight's Castle. Actually, I might put it up there with the Lion's Knight's Castle, because I just love it so much. So the last thing I'll say about this set is that it's... Interesting, it's actually gonna be an exclusive at Target. So in the US, you can only get it at Target. Now, what do I mean by that? Yes, you can only get it at Target. It'll be a Target exclusive, but you can definitely still get it at Lego Shop at home or at a Lego store. So don't worry about it. if you don't live in the US, you'll still be able to get this set from Lego. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the first figure. This seems to be some sort of artist. This is the one that comes in the little armory side build. And she has this awesome hammer. This is the Thor hammer from like 2012, I think. And there's a lot of awesome details printed here on it. See if we could get a closer look. It's kind of hard to get on camera because it's kind of shiny. It has like this coppery gold sheen to it. But essentially it has these three dots on the side and this cool little Viking script and it's on both sides as well. So that's a lot of cool detail just in one little piece. The figure also has my favorite, which is toes. You know, I love it when minifigures come with toe printing. And she's got a nice little torso print as well. Same on the back and she does not have a dual sided face. She seems really happy to be here and she gets a green paintbrush. This is the Viking, I'm assuming the king or the leader of this clan. I really like his like little hood piece back there. And again, big fan of the toe printing. I think all four of these figures come with toe printing. They got that cool green and yellow shield and overall it just looks nice. Only has one side to his face. I think this is the same face as in the lighthouse set actually, I'm not sure. And he's got that really big broad sword that you see those Vikings usually have. This is another warrior I'm assuming. She comes with this giant ax as well as this shield here. And she's got a little winky face as if she's aiming. You think she would have the bow and arrow. And there's her other face there on the back. I like her little braided hair. It looks like it might be a friend's hair piece because it has that hole on the top. And again, we got the nice printed toes. And the final figure of the set is this archer. He's got some cool little war paint on there. Kind of has a metallic sheen to it, which is kind of cool, like an emerald greenish metallic sheen. I love the printing on his torso. He's got a whole bunch of little knickknacks and stuff. And again, got to win with this toe printing, especially in this color. You don't normally see this color of pants for minifigures, so that's pretty cool. He's got a quill. He does have printing under there. And unfortunately, no face in the back. What are you going to do?
Anyways, let me know what you think about this set, and let me know what you feel about Led Zeppelin. I personally love Led Zeppelin. It's my favorite band of all time. Catch you next time. Mm.